What's going on YouTube? So I want to do a quick video on two things. The first is going to talk about uh, basically studio updates. I haven't done one since last year so I have a couple new plugins and a new uh, fun toy to add to the studio. And the second is going to talk about uh, if you want to set up a recording area, um, how you want to do it. Do you want to do it as a home studio or as a recording uh, studio? So we'll talk about those variations here in a little bit. But so the new addition, super soaked, is going to be this Focusrite Scarlet series. Um, been looking at this guy for a number of months, um, scouting out different uh, plugins I could use and pros and cons, and uh, landed on this guy for a number of reasons. So the first is Focusrite's known for great products. Uh, a number of people use them, especially for professional studios, um, and they're built to last. So that's a good thing, especially if you're spending money. You don't want to be tossing the, the stuff out you know, in a few months. Um, I was looking particularly for a few features uh, to add um, to make my life easier in the in my own studio. And the features of this, I wanted something that would offer phantom power as a microphone, um, offer a direct line for an instrument, and uh, something that would uh, prevent me from walking across a room to check levels aside from using looking at my DAW. Because um, sometimes when you're in the moment, it's already passed and you have to re-record everything. So with that. Uh, the Solo series fitted my preference. Uh, I'm not a professional studio, nor am I a professional musician, so I don't need an expensive large rack um, and tons of plugins to kind of just take up space and air and collect dust. Um, the, the product is simple and small. If I need to take my laptop and that and my guitar and go to a friend's house, I can. And basically my entire studio is moved. Um, and that's the best thing about uh, you know being a home musician is that if you want to go to a buddy's house or have someone move, you don't want to lug a, a ton of gear. Um, so you want something that's easy. This is USB powered, so that's a bonus. Um, also, this has the new features of the halo lights. Um, if you're not familiar with them, basically if you're recording and you're uh, going at a higher volume level that will start clipping, your light will turn from green to red. So all I have to do is turn over here, turn down your gain volume, and you're at a perfect uh, you know recording level. Uh, it does feature uh, a monitor knob control, latency control, and headphone jack in the front, which is a bonus. Um, so with the program, or with the product rather, it came with a few programs. Um, it did come with the Scarlet series, which is a huge uh, update to a lot of my, my plugins that I'm using. Um, it came with Ableton Lite Live, uh, came with Red 2 and 3 electronic racks, and uh, some loops to add to the studio. So there's tons of new stuff in there I'll get to mess with, um, but there is a whole other world to the DAW that I have not been taking advantage of, which is the, uh, the digital amp cabs and uh, guitar pedals. So uh, a lot of times I'm recording through my uh, foot pedal and using USB, but the latency's killing me lately, um, and I'm not getting the, the great perfect sound that I want to as a recording level. Um, and if I want something simple, I want I just want to plug in, use the DAW, and be done. And so that's what this is going to offer for me, as well as making my life easier for recording levels. Um, now the other thing is uh, I wanted something that was easy. Um, a lot of people don't like the Compact series because it has RCA jacks in the back. Now keep in mind, um, my monitors have TRS and XLR inputs. So what I did is I had a cable. Um, purchased off of Amazon and it went from RCA to TRS and uh, I have no issues with them and they have perfect sound so keep that in mind don't be deterred by the RCAs um, there's tons of chords and combinations you can you know uh, create one with to make your, your studio work so the other thing is uh, how do you want to record and nowadays it's endless you have iPads iPhones uh, you know you have uh, handheld devices you have foot pedals the options are endless nowadays. So the best thing is, uh, think about how you're recording. Are you going to be recording uh, instruments, or are you going to be recording percussive instruments? So drums, um, you know, maracas, um, things are going to require a isolated room for sound. Um, so anything that's bouncing off the walls is evidently going to, you know, uh, muddy up a track, and you're not going to get the level that you want ideally. Or are you straight up just recording guitars and bass? Um, and if you're doing vocals, you know, that's a give and take. So for example, um, if you like singing a lot and you want to do, you know, quick songs, 
You can just take your microphone, go into your closet with all the clothes, have a more isolated, deadened sound, and record in there and have your cord coming out of the door. I mean, it, it works perfectly. You have tons of stuff for musicians, friends, that you can have um, a, a mic shield for isolation. You can hang up U-Haul sheets and drop them from the ceiling. Uh, or are you doing a group of people? Do you want a nice big sound? Um, and with that uh, you know, said, you're either gonna wanna go with a home recording studio, which is basically everything digital. You don't need anything isolated aside from cables going to your computer. Or you're gonna be doing you know, professional style music um, and you're gonna need that space. You're gonna need that option for um, a deadened space for mastering tracks professionally. Um, and that route, you're gonna to wanna to go for a professional home studio. And you're gonna to have to you know, uh, monitor um, where you're putting your, your uh, equipment in your room, making sure any unnecessary furniture is moved out. Um, you're gonna phone treat your walls and your ceiling and your floors. So that all comes at a cost. So the quicker you know how you record and where you can record and get away with the cut corners, um, the better you'll be. Uh, evidently, uh, as you see, mine's in the corner. It's not the ideal spot, but for a room that I want to continue to live in and not, you know, just cut it off as a recording area, um, I deal with what I have. In the front, I have a huge bookcase of walls that'll so deaden a lot of the sound, and I have the book staggered. Um, so if, if you see any a lot of uh, isolation block walls, um, they have a whole bunch of different variations and levels of wood coming out. So it's not exactly the same, um, but I'm achieving the same stuff, um, the same idea, and especially with the window next to me, I have a whole bunch of blankets in it, and then, you know, uh, so that deadens the sound, it's nothing bouncing off the walls. But again, um, you deal with the, the, the space that you have and try to make the best of it, um, and that's what I've done. As far as getting a setup for a studio, um, if you have a guitar and an amp, the first thing you need to record is a platform, right? So you're going to need an interface unit, whether that's your iPhone, your iPad, uh, your computer. So you need an actual interface unit by itself. Um, or if you're using your foot pedal, um, like I do, and uh, you go that route. You need some way to record your sound. Uh, once you have that, you need something to listen to. Because if you're going off speakers, you're going to be missing you know, the, mile, um, the mile shot by a huge, huge extent. And then once you max, match your tracks... You'll upload it and then you'll hear it and go, that's not the same sound I heard. And you're absolutely right, it's not, but it's how you're listening to it. So, for myself, I had purchased uh, a number of years ago um, Pioneer headphones. And they are probably the flat response microphones that I've found. Sound great, they're very comfortable. Um, and I'm pretty close to when I take these off and, you, and listen to the music to my monitors, uh, I probably have to tweak a little bit and uh, not too drastic. But these are the uh, SE M390s that are amazing. They have a great bass response to them as well. Um, so I have this one plus a spare case. This one breaks. And I um, absolutely love those, micro those uh, headphones. Uh, for microphones, rather, now, I have the MXL 2008. It's a condenser microphone. I wound up getting through an auction. And uh, sweet microphone. It's very versatile. Um, it'll record mics, vocals, pretty much anything, instruments that you want. And so I have that as well. Um, so once you have a good microphone, um, and if you're going vocals and you have your um, interface unit, you have your headphones, you're going to want to look at speakers. And speakers are a huge uh, battle for a lot of people. It was for me. Um, I spent a great number of uh, months for a good part of the, of the year looking at speakers, doing a lot of research, um, and doing a lot of, of personal testing on them. Um, and the best way you can probably pick one out is in person. You can listen to a lot of people. You can go with KRKs. You can go with uh, Yamahas. Uh, but there's a few factors you have to deal with. One is your budget. You can't really go over that. So what is the best bank you can go for your buck? Uh, two is the sound you're going for. Um, I went to a guitar center, picked out you know eight or nine tracks from different genres, and uh, had a, my wife uh, go to each monitor switch and basically turn them on and off, on and off. And whichever one sounded great, that would save in the selection. It was almost like a, uh, a playoff you know, chain. And uh, the ones that wound up staying to the end were the M-Audio BX-5s. And um, there is 
a 8 inch monitor. I went up to staying with the 5 inch. It was more than enough. Uh, they may be small, but they're super loud. And uh, they had a great bass response. I mean, they are near field. They are each individually powered, so that was a bonus. Um, and like I said, they offer the two different type of inputs, so I don't have to deal with the mixer. Um, so that was a big thing. The uh, uh, other additive I had last year was I built these stands. Um, so basically, whatever chair I was going to be using in my studio, I measured out my ear level with the, uh, the mo uh, monitors and uh, built the stands so I don't have to have you know separate stands on the side of my desk. And uh, so that helped a lot. The uh, other thing is, is I... Um, wound up getting a isolation field for my microphone stand um, so I can set the microphone in the uh, the recording area so if I have AC on or fans I'm not capturing all that different air volume um, so that's a huge thing um, is trying to figure out how to get around a lot of the tweaks uh, the tweaks and, and, and things that you deal with in a bedroom and they're not uh, ideally for recording but uh, you do the best you can and uh, you have fun so if you have any questions, if you uh, have any concerns with what you're doing, uh, please leave a message. I'll, I'll return your email. And uh, thanks for watching.